sunrise. The harvest of sunlight begins. Plants, from microscopic algae to giant sequoias, converting radiant solar energy into chemical energy. It's a process billions of years old. Millions of years of that process created a biomass that eventually became fossil fuels. With those fossil fuel reserves dwindling, the scientific race is on to convert the sunlight harvested by plants into new fuels that augment and eventually replace petroleum. It's a critical challenge, but there is a powerful tool tackling it. Sandia National Laboratory's Red Sky Supercomputer, with a special cluster called Red Mesa, dedicated specifically to the National Renewable Energy Laboratory, NREL. Red Sky advances the legacy of the Sandia Red machines that preceded it, ASCII Red and Red Storm. Red Sky was designed to support national security projects and energy security is critical to national security. That's why NREL is using the Red Mesa cluster in the quest to transform biomass into biofuel. One of the best biomass to biofuel candidates is corn. But not this part, this part. That's right, the part that is normally considered waste, like stalks, leaves, and cobs. One reason NREL is targeting the cellulose part of corn is because corn is the largest crop grown in the U.S. There's a well-established infrastructure supporting its distribution that could also be used for fuel. Here's the problem. Cellulose is the structural part of the corn plant. Think of it like the bones of a plant. It is strong and difficult to deconstruct. Sugar, the molecular building blocks of biofuels, are locked within the cellulose. Scientists at NREL use the Red Mesa cluster to perform complex molecular dynamics modeling and simulation involving billions of interactions at the atomic level. These simulations will aid in engineering enzymes that will tease apart the cellulose and unlock the sugar. A computational problem of this magnitude would take four to six months to run on an average supercomputer. But Red Sky with the Red Mesa cluster is no average supercomputer. It's in the top 10 of the world's fastest supercomputers, running at an astonishing 433 teraflops, or 433 trillion calculations per second. With that level of speed, NREL was able to get results from its molecular modeling and simulation run in just six weeks. Red Sky has really enabled us to um, be able to do uh, very, very large scale simulations that would typically take on the order of um, you know, four to six months on a typical supercomputer. Um, now we can do them in, on the order of four to six weeks. And so it's really enabled us to do very large scale molecular dynamic simulations of cellulose decrystallization and trying to understand how the plant cell wall can be deconstructed. The challenge of developing better biofuels actually presents a companion challenge, designing better engines to burn those biofuels. NREL is using the Red Mesa cluster to work on that problem too. At NREL, we're working to build kinetic models of advanced fuel chemistry, including biofuels, so that other researchers will have a, a platform to study and evaluate in an engine-based model to predict how the fuel will burn in an engine. And Red Sky will allow us to evaluate these kinetic models in a time scale of weeks rather than months or even a year that our current system would take. Creating new biofuels can be a tedious trial and error process involving chemical interactions between enzymes and plant material. Sometimes the product of a new formulation wouldn't even fill a small pill bottle. These tiny amounts of fuel can be optimized by first characterizing them on Red Mesa. There are hundreds of chemical species and thousands of reactions in the combustion of biofuels. Red Sky provides the ability to probe deeper into the chemistry and physics of combustion. Comprehensive models of how these new fuels burn provide the foundation for better and more efficient engines. As work at NREL demonstrates, supercomputers are invaluable resources for discovering new solutions to environmental problems. But the obvious irony 
is that supercomputers can actually be environmental problems, sucking up massive amounts of energy and water. Not Red Sky. Every aspect of its implementation minimizes its environmental impact, from the power distribution system that significantly reduces power leakage to the energy-efficient processors. The deployment team even received recognition for recycling the packing material. Red Sky features the Intel Xeon 5500 series processor, an amazingly energy-efficient multi-core technology that intelligently maximizes performance to match workload. Then there's the matter of heat. Supercomputers generate a lot of it. The old paradigm of supercomputer cooling was to chill the cavernous machine rooms to glacial temperatures. In contrast, Red Sky uses a glacier door by Sun Microsystems, the first rack-mounted, refrigerant-based passive cooling system on the market. The glacier doors cool the components, removing 90% of the heat load. This strategic cooling is further enhanced by feeding cool air through perforated tiles to the first row of cabinets. Cool air passes through the glacier doors from rack to rack by laminar flow. The air exiting the last rack is actually cooler at the end of the flow than at the beginning. Besides saving energy, the glacier doors also save water, about 5 million gallons a year, enough to fill nearly eight Olympic-sized swimming pools. Red Sky should really be called Green Sky. It's the most energy efficient computer we've deployed to date. However, being green is only one aspect of Red Sky's innovative design. Red Sky is a commodity-based system, meaning it was built from off-the-shelf equipment. However, a system with such a high level of innovation and complexity would not be possible without extensive vendor cooperation. For instance, Sandia and Sun Microsystems jointly designed the InfiniBand interconnect switches that move data to and from external devices. In fact, this was the very first InfiniBand installation to use only optical interconnect cables. It's very clear to me that we couldn't have pulled this project off without very exceptionally close cooperation with the major vendors on the project. Intel gave us very early access to their latest and greatest processor, the Nehalem processor, so that we could design around it. And Sun had the very central role of bringing the whole system together and co-developing the architecture with us. There were about 10 major innovations that we brought into the system. Red Sky is a capacity machine designed to run multiple jobs rather than full system processing. At the same time, the computer power of Red Sky can be a resource for a wide range of potential users that need to solve big problems. Users like the National Renewable Energy Laboratory with the Red Mesa Cluster. Red Sky is a high performance computing resource, it provides us a tenfold increase in the computational capability that we have at the lab right now. And that's an invaluable capability for us in terms of advancing our ability to improve the energy efficiency of wind turbines, to investigate novel materials for improved efficiency or lower cost for solar photovoltaics and biofuels. Red Sky will be a key player in advancing these technologies. Next up for NREL is improving the blades of wind turbines to move more quietly and efficiently, as well as improve photovoltaics and solar thermal electric storage. These are not new technologies, but they still need refinement to be economically practical. Sunset. At the end of one day, the sun provided more energy than the Earth's current population would consume in 27 years. Sandia National Laboratory's Red Sky Supercomputer with NREL's Red Mesa Cluster burned through an incomprehensible number of calculations. Plants transformed the sun's radiant energy into chemical energy. And Red Sky 